Good morning, everybody. Today's a little bit silly, but it actually is about some particularly important ideas in genetics. We're going to do talking about cat coat color patterns and how the genes interact to produce one phenotype, which is a cat coat color pattern, and also that the genes that are involved are the same as a lot of genes that we use as humans to produce melanin and deposit it correctly in our own bodies. So the idea, of course, is that any phenotype will have many genes that contribute to it. The actual phenotype depends on these interactions, with some genes modifying the effects of others, in some cases obscuring them entirely. So the genes we're going to talk about, there's more than this, but these are the main ones influencing coat color pattern in, in cats. Okay, the first one is the A, or a goody locus, and that is what determines the tigery pattern in a tiger cat. The B locus is going to be black versus brown is the basic color. Most cats are the default of big B. You can assume that if, without other information. The C locus is required for any color to form. So a cat that's little c, little c is albino. D locus influences the intensity of the color. So if a cat is genetically a black cat but has little d, little d, the color is diluted and the cat becomes gray. The O locus we've seen before, where we have the black color is modified to orange, and that's the one that's involved in X chromosome inactivation. We've seen that before. Then we have the S locus, which is piebald spotting, um, and that is going to determine how much white color appears on a cat, which otherwise has um, actual colors to it. There's a dominant W gene, which was thought originally to be a different gene entirely, but that's actually a very strong allele of S which basically obliterates all the color of the cat totally. Okay, so the agouti is big A, big A, or big A, little A cats are agouti. And each hair has bands of yellow and black. So as the hair grows out, there are going to be pulses of synthesis of the two different types of melanin, the black eumelanin and the yellow pheomelanin distribution. So the banding pattern results from the on and off pattern of pigment deposition. So if you're a goody, you're going to have a tigery pattern that you can see. But if you're a non-agouti, little a, little a, you're going to be solid color, black or gray or whatever else is determined by the other genes in your genotype. Okay, so here's a picture of an agouti hair where you can see this little pattern of stripes along the length of the hair, which is caused by the change in the um, deposition of pigment in the fur. A non-agouti is little a, little a, and that's going to be a solid color. Okay, so this cat is a goody. You can see his tiger pattern because of the pattern of, of dark and light stripes um, that are made in the hair as, as they grow out. Okay, the B locus is the black locus, and this is assumed most cats are big B, big B, and we will assume this without other information. There are little B, little B cats, and those are brown, but those are characteristic of particular breed cats, and those like Siamese, and those are rare otherwise. Okay, the D locus allows for normal intense color. In the absence of big D, that is to say your little d, little d, this color is modified to dilute. So a black cat, genetically, is going to be gray if it's got little d, little d. If the cat's supposed to be orange, it's going to be a creamy color if it's also little d, little d. So little d, little d is epistatic to B because it modifies the phenotypes produced by the big B alleles. This cat is little d, little d. It's a very definite gray color. Okay, this cat is big d, big, big d something because he's got the nice intense black color. This cat is little d, little d. It's a kind of a creamy color versus the usual brighter orange color. The C gene is needed for the formation of any color. Little c, little c cats are albino. Okay, there are some function, partially functional alleles, uh, for example, in the Siamese cats, where you have color forming in the ears and the paws and the tail. Okay, so this allele produces a temperature-sensitive, or TS, protein, where it's active at, at cooler temperature, but inactive at higher temperature. So in the extremities of the body, in the ears and the tail, the gene can be active to produce some pigment, some color, but in the cooler areas of the body, um, the warmer areas of the body, rather, 
um, have much less pigment produced. So it's a partially active allele and temperature sensitive. Okay, so the color will occur in the extremities, but not the body. Okay, this particular gene actually is, encodes tyrosinase, which is the first step in melanin biosynthesis from tyrosine. Okay, so the TS is responsible for the ears, feet, and tail of the cats. Now, the same gene in people, if mutant, will lead to an albino person. Okay, so here's your Siamese cat. He has nice dark ears. The little face is, is nice and brown, and his feet as well. Um, so he's not got complete color. He has partial color because the um, C gene, which encodes tyrosinase, is partially produces a partially active protein, but not a completely active one. Okay, the little kitten on the right is albino. This cat is little c, little c, having no pigment produced anywhere in her body. Okay, we've got the O locus. We've seen this one before because it causes the black pigment to become orange. And we saw, we saw this in our X chromosome inactivation as a visible evidence of X chromosome inactivation because the females can be big O, little O, or big O, big O. And so they can be calico or tortoiseshell, or they can be orange, but males can't be calico or, 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 um, or tortoiseshell because they have either a big O allele or a little O allele. So they're either going to be orange or they're going to be black, depending on which allele they have. Only females have the chance to have both of them. Okay, so this male cat is big O Y, meaning to say he's orange. Okay. Now, one thing about the orange allele, because you can't produce the black pigment, you can't tell whether the cat's a goody or not. You'll have the default tabby pattern in the cat, but a goody can't be determined in a cat that's orange. Okay, so female can be big O little O, but the, remember the patches of her fur are going to express one of those genes, but not the other because of the X chromosome inactivation process. Remember, one X is active in any cell, so the female cat will have patches of black and orange. Okay, the last one we're going to talk about is the S locus for piebald spotting, and this determines the pattern of pigment deposition in the body. So little s, little s cats have pigment all over their bodies with little or no white on them. Big s, little s cats have pigment usually in the upper areas of the body, but underneath are usually white in the feet, chest, and underneath. These cats are sometimes called tuxedo cats. So they've got plenty of color to them, but they have considerable regions of white generally underneath. Okay, big S, big S cats are mostly white, but have areas of, or regions of pigment, generally less than half of them, half of it being pigmented. In the case of the dominant W allele, the cat's actually completely white. Okay, so the big S, big S cats have some spots of color, Big S, little s have white underneath. Little s, little s cats have no white or very, very little. Okay, so this cat is probably big S, big S because she has a lot of white underneath, but um, some areas of pigment largely on the top portions of her body. Okay, this is a tuxedo cat. He's big S, little s. You can see he's got a nice black fur on most of his body, but his chest and his underneath um, have big patches of white because of the piebald spotting locus. Okay, this cat is also big S, little s for the same reason that he's got these white patches because of the S locus. Okay, this cat is little is a uh, big S, big S because she has really mostly white and only some patches of, of color on the upper part of her body. Notice that she's also um, big O, little O, since she's calico. Notice that she's big D, since she's not dilute. She's got the usual orange color and black color. She's big C, because she has color. And she's also little A, little A, because her patches are black or pure black and not tiger stripe. So the other genes will also come into play. You have to put them together to get what the cat actually looks like. I said this before, O is epistatic to agouti. So if a cat's orange, you can't tell whether the cat is a goody or not. Here's some cute kittens. So now we get to put this together and for any particular cat, say what their genotype, what their genotypes are for all these different loci. 
Okay, so we look at this cat, and he's got a nice, sleek black color to him. It's not dilute. So we know that he's not a goody because he's not a tiger strap cat. He's got some patches of white, but not that much of it. In fact, we're not asking about the S anyway. So we, the, clearly the cat is little a, little a, because he's not a goody. So we look at the rest of the options here. He certainly has big B, not little b, little b. He certainly has color. He's certainly not dilute. And he's certainly not orange, right? So this is going to be a female cat. She's little o, little o. So she's black all over. So the only one of our choices that works here is C, agouti, black color, has color, intense color, and the color itself is black. Okay, which describes the genotype of this female cat? Well, you can see that she's gray, and you can also see that she's not a goody. So we're going to look for the little d's and the little a's. So she's not a goody, so she's little a, little a for sure. She's certainly little d, little d. She's not calico, so she has no orange. Both of her alleles must be the black allele, so she must be little o, little o. So the only one that fits here is the b, I think. Little a, little a, big b, big c, little d, little d, little o, little o. The rest don't work. The answer is B. Okay, which of the following best describes the genotype of this cat? Again, we're not asking about all the low side, just some of them. Okay, so the cat has color, so it's, it's big B, the default. It's not brown. It's, the cat is big C because she has color. She's not dilute, and she's a calico. So she's got to be big O, little O, right? So she's going to be the only options here that work are the First, well, no, she can't, the first one can't be right because she has color. And that leaves us with the last one because she's got big B, big C, not dilute, and calico. So the answer is E. Okay, some more, this is a mom and her four kittens. Okay, so we can work this process in reverse with a fake cat. All right, so we're told that this cat is big A, big A, big B, big B, big C, big C, big D, big D, big S, big S, X, little O, little O. So we can predict her phenotype from that genotype. So looking at them all in order, um, she's big A, so she's certainly a goody. So she's going to be tigery. And she's got black color. She has color. It's not dilute. Um, she's got the big S, big S, meaning she's going to have a lot of white on her because of the piebald spotting locus. And the little O, little O means that she's going to be basically black. So the only one that works is the mostly agouti, or mostly white rather, because of the big S, S, big S, big S, with some agouti tiger patches. So the answer is D. Okay, a male cat is little a, little a, big B, big B, big C, big C, little D, little D, big S, little S, little O, Y. So the little a, little a tells us that he's not a tiger. He's going to be a solid cat. The little d, little d tells us that he's not going to be black because the little d is going to dilute it to gray. So he's going to be solid color gray for sure. Um, and he's going to be big s, little s, so he's going to have significant white patches on his body. So the answer that works here is gray with white patches. Okay, so this is a little silly, but it is really a general phenomenon in that any phenotype that you can see is a result of interactions of many different genes. So one clear example here is the little c, little c, where it masks the phenotypes that will be produced by all the other genes involved in color formation and pattern formation. If you're, if you're little c, little c, you're albino, and you can have all the big A, big B you want, you're still going to be a white cat. So here we have an albino cat. What is the genotype of this cat relative to all these loci? Answer, we can't tell. She has to have kittens to reveal her genotype. So if you mated her at times a homozygous recessive male, and you could look at the, at the phenotypes of the kittens, you'd be able to guess at least some aspects of what her genotype is, or else do DNA testing on it. But the albinism is epistatic to any color genes that she might have.
Okay, so human pathway of melanin synthesis is very similar to the feline one, and there are mutations in some of these same genes that actually cause genetic syndromes in, in people. Okay, so here's our melanin biosynthesis pathway. We've seen this before. Remember, the first step in the pathway is tyrosinase, which is um, the absence of which causes um, albinism in people. And there's some other very conserved proteins in the same process. Okay, we also have the melanin uh, cell biology issue because these are very complicated molecules. And in order to get them made and into the where they need to be in the skin, they're packaged into melanosomes whose mature contents are then sent by processes. So a lot of things have to be done correctly for melanin, not to just to be made, but to get to where it's supposed to be in the body. And there are numerous proteins involved in numerous genes here. So in terms of people, the big C gene in human is actually the tyrosinase protein itself, which is tyre, also called OCA1. So this is, it, mutations in this gene are responsible for many human cases of albinism. Okay, similarly for the B gene, the protein is, well, the human gene is called OCA3, tyrosinase-related protein, and mutations there also lead to albinism in humans. Okay, the agouti signaling protein in cats influences choice between synthesis of yellow and black melanins. Okay, in people, it negatively re regulates melanin synthesis in human, switching between yellow and black production. So again, this agouti signaling protein serves a similar function in human as it does into cats. The D gene similarly encodes in people protein called melanophyllin, and mutations in that gene give abnormal distribution of pigment granules along the hair shaft, insufficient delivery of melanin, not synthesis. Okay, the S gene is a little strange. Um, remember the big S, big S cats are mostly white, but with patches of pigmented fur. Now, the human equivalent is actually a proto-oncogene, and mutations there lead to a condition called piebaldism, in which you get patches of unpigmented skin throughout the body, but generally on the ventral surface of the body.